Welcome back to Snark and Spark. My name is Emily and today is another plan with me video. This time it is my August dashboard page. Now, if you have already seen my monthly, I am continuing on drink break. I am continuing on using the plum paper planner <laughs> monthly sticker kit to set up my dashboard now. I used it to set up my monthly. It is the happy days. D-A-Z-E is what the envelope says. Um, I did that with my monthly. Hopefully you saw that. And now I am doing my dashboard. This is going to be short and sweet. I just wanted to show me setting this up. I did not bother with pulling it out of the planner since it's just the one page. And all I'm doing here is I'm using the dashboard specific um, stickers. So they all come with that one sheet that has like the long divider and then four like smaller header dividers and then we've got like some different category labels so I just took the two like pinky ones and I laid those across the, the top of those two boxes to cover up what was written there then I'm taking these two gold flag label headers they both just say checklist on them and I am going to use one side to track um, books I want to read across different groups and then on the other side I'm going to use the magical stitches reading prompts I'm gonna write down the magical stitches reading prompts so right now I'm just taking these three matching label stickers I covered the one two and three there's also a very faint gray line that is separating those that section um, I think it had said priorities and one, two, three, so I covered them up. And I'm flipping back and forth and looking at what I did for July. You saw that really briefly there. I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm just flipping the left and the right top two squares. So on the left I have, it says Family BC, which stands for Family Book Club. So I'm going to write down what we're doing there. So I'm also going to use these colored dots and I'm trying to figure out the order I want to use the colored dots in. Um, this month is my husband's aunt's turn to pick. Her name is Janice. So Janice has picked Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. Um, it has a ridiculously long wait time. So I put a hold on, and I, you know, I work for the library, so I put a hold on a physical copy. I put a hold on a digital copy. I put a hold on the audiobook, the e-audiobook. I put a hold on a physical audiobook because I do have a CD player in my car. Um, and it was just going to take forever to get it. I actually just ended up going and buying myself a physical copy of it this past weekend to have it. And then, of course, it came. So next, it is Whipgo, which is, I also do Bookgo. I've created a bingo board full of different book prompts. And when the numbers get called, I fill them in and um, try to attempt it. So the numbers that got pulled for this month are 18 and 24. You can see I'm repositioning my stickers. Um, I didn't care about giving myself room to write down the titles because I've actually already completed both prompts for these numbers. Number 18 is set in England or Australia, and I have already completed that. I read a book that was set in England earlier in the year. It was actually part of the family book club. Um, my husband's sister picked it. And then number 24 is a plate, teacup, or a thimble on the cover, and I actually finished that back in January. So yeah. <laughs> So I just put in brackets underneath there that it says both done, so I don't need to worry about it. And last but not least, I am tracking the Goodreads Horror Top 20 Horror of 2022, and I am scrolling to see what is next. I currently have Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. I have that right now, and the next one, because I'm going from number 20 all the way to number one. The next one is called We Spread by Ian Reed. So that is what's next. Then SK stands for Stephen King, because you know I'm trying to read Stephen King's works. Um, his entire bibliography, his fiction, at least fiction bibliography in order as well. Um, for whatever reason, I have missed 
road work that is a very old book and I just have missed it and I think it's because I don't have a physical copy available to me through my job there are um, ebooks an ebook is available but I just put off getting it you know I had my Kindle died on me I didn't want to read it on my phone I don't like to read books on my phone but I'll use an e-reader and we actually just got a new tablet we got a fire tablet during prime day they had it on sale so yeah um i now have my new tablet and because it is a kindle it is an amazon product kindle is already integrated prime is already integrated and that's super exciting so i'm going to be getting that it is kind of nice that i already have some of the WIPCO done because then i don't need to worry about it and that that is a relief so on the other side, I've pulled off one of those little like label kind of headers and I've just wrote magical stitches and now I'm using the little colored, uh oh, I believe my husband is home. I'm using the little colored dots as well to mark what the prompts for magical stitches is. Again, remember I gave up reading the year long, um, the year long series but a month ago it just wasn't for me and it was like the quilters the elm creek quilters series it just wasn't for me and that's okay um so i'm just still participating i'm doing the other um the other prompts so the first one is a book where some kind of big dance is held and I was struggling to come up with something off the top of my head and so actually I went back through to my Goodreads and I looked through it and realized I have read a book actually that is about a dance a, where a dance is held and it's called um, House of Salt and Sorrow by Aaron A. Craig. It's a retelling of the like um, a fairy tale about a king with like 12 daughters and they go dancing in the middle of the night. Um, it's very good. But I read that several months ago. The next one is a cover that shows a patterned background. And so what I'm actually doing is I'm scrolling through my Goodreads here and I'm looking at my want to read list to find one that I think will fit. And I kind of scroll through. I look at a couple like I'd started playing Bad Heroines last year. I really enjoyed it, but I never finished it because it is really long. I scroll through some more, I look at a couple, um, but ultimately I end up going back to the one that I had highlighted, and that is, I own that book, <laughs> The Midnight Library. You can see me kind of tapping there trying to make a decision, um, but ultimately, oh, app crashed. <laughs> I did decide I was going to go with, where'd it go? A Marvelous Light by Freya Marska. Um, I know she is a foreign author, but it does have a patterned background. And with, so I'm like, this is perfect. I want to read it. It's fairly new, at least to me. And so I just added that there. And then the last category that I have to track here is um, a thriller. And I still don't have a thriller picked. I looked and I looked and I looked and was really kind of racking my brains like did I want to pull one of the horror books as one? Did I want to go through my shelf and look? And I ultimately just decided um, because we are Prime, because we do have Prime members, that um, there is the Amazon First Reads. So if you have Prime at the beginning of every month, you can pick a book, an ebook, to read early before its published date. And they always give you an option of like four to five, and you can pick one and then you own it early for free. Oh, there's my head. <laughs> um, and so I just decided instead of trying to force myself to come up with one right now, I will wait for the first reads to come out because I filmed this before August, and uh, I would then pick one from there and that would be my thriller since I do have a goal to actually read my Amazon first read picks and stay up on them. I've done a horrible job of it this year but that is one of my ultimate reading goals. Then I'm moving on to this section so I took that longer header 
I covered it across. Um, I covered up where it said notes, and then I took that blue label and I that says goals and plopped that down there. Um, you can tell you that I am just like, what am I doing here? <laughs> what am I? What am I trying to do? So I did decide oh, I am going to use this for stitching. Um, so the August categories, if you have followed Sammy um, with Sammy's Day Stitches, you know, she talks about the categories and invites us all to stitch them along with her. And so I was, I had stopped tracking them, kind of quit doing it, but I got my stitchy bug back and I want to jump in with them again. So I decided to write them down here and actually try and plan a little bit. But, so, <laughs> you get to see me fidget. Um, if you'll notice my right hand, I've got it on my mouse. I'm actually pull pulling up Facebook and trying to look at the face, like, if it's on Facebook anywhere, um, if I can find it. Um, but then with my left hand, I'm just fidgeting with a pen, and I didn't realize that I did this so much, but apparently I do. <laughs> um you know, just looking to see if I had it posted anywhere, if I had written it down, because um, I couldn't remember what they all were. And I have them. Oh, look, I found them. So I did the same thing with one of those checklists that I actually did in my monthly, but if you didn't see it, I'll explain it here. The checklist has five boxes, and I cut it apart. So I will cut it, and then I can then place it each individual box however I want. It doesn't bother me that they're wonky, that they're misshaped or whatever, that they're not all equal. I just like that each one, each box is on its own line because the sticker kit is, is manufactured, is printed for a plum paper planner. It obviously doesn't fit the line spacing for my planner exactly, but don't be afraid to cut your stickers because that's what I do. Um, and then I just, I used, I'm going to use them as the check boxes and then hopefully go back and check them off as I do them. So I have number one is the whip with the least amount done, which is my ladybug. Oh, I haven't written it down yet. I'm writing all the categories down first. At <laughs> least amount done. Number two is your newest start. Number three is your closest to a finish. Number four is your struggle bus piece. And then number five is a holiday, not a season, a specific holiday. Um, now, obviously, if any of these, I don't have a whip that fits for them, I will just use my like go-to whip, which is my Hogwarts piece because it's so old and I need to finish it um, by the end of this year because my niece is about to turn three. <laughs> So it needs to be, it's coming up on its third birthday, so it, you know, it needs to be done so I can give that to her. So then I just wrote down what projects that I want to work on. Um, I have Ladybug, which I don't believe I've shown at all. It is my newest start. It does have the least amount done. I think it has a total of like 15, 20 stitches in it, and that's it. Um, so that's going to go for my least amount done and for the newest start. Um, closest to a finish is Letters from Hogwarts because I just need to do that bottom row basically um I need to finish up the Quidditch square and then do that bottom right corner then my struggle bus is the baby afghan that I'm working on because that baby is due ASAP and I don't want another three year long project that is supposed to go to a niece or nephew <laughs> that is not at all what I want and then the last one for holiday I'm going to do one of my Halloween sales I just wrote Halloween sale I didn't pick a specific one because I I have like two or three and I'll just grab whichever one I, is calling to me um, at the time. Um, the bonus, Sammy mentioned it in her video, you know, like arbitrary August of like spinning a wheel and letting the wheel decide what you work on and I just wrote, nope, <laughs> like I'm not going to do it. Um, I want to ease my way back into the stitching since I kind of took a break from it. And then because I had such a gap over there on that right hand side and I didn't want to just leave it blank, I decided to use the circles, those big circles. Um, the Plum Paper Planner dashboard actually has a designated space on all of them for those circles. Obviously a Happy Planner doesn't, so I'm just making it fit. 
however I want it to. Um, but I took that big one and wrote what my total goal is. So I want to do a thousand stitches for the month. I'm going back to basics. I just want to do a thousand stitches, which would, and I'm, but I want to aim to put 200 stitches into each task. Um, then, so I took that last yellow flag and put down the semi-stain, semi-sane stitchers event that I'm in, which is, um, battle stitch. We're basically playing battleship with our stitches. And, um, I had asked to be randomized. So I don't, I didn't have my team at the time of filming this. Also, so you see, I did put down that blue tracker because I do want to track how many days I work out this month like I did last month, but it just didn't seem to fit. Um, it felt weird putting it on here since these are like, these are goals, yes, and that's a goal as well, but like, it just didn't seem to, f it didn't feel right to have my workout tracker here with my goals for reading and stitching. So I decided not to put it on this planner dashboard and instead I'm going to put it in my health planner. So I just moved it back up and instead I pulled these other circles and I just decided I'm going to use them as decoration but I couldn't figure out how I wanted them to sit. I, you know, I was like, let me layer them and then let me pull these like cute little arrows and I just struggle bust with this section. <laughs> Um, on this one, I wrote the August 1st reads pick because I, my thought was like, I will write down what my August pick is. And then I didn't like how that looked. So then here we go. My thought is, okay, it's the August 1st reads pick. The arrow connects to that yellow circle. I'll write the title in that yellow circle. And then I'm going to use these other arrows to just kind of draw connections, right? So I've got that top arrow showing that the thousand stitches is connected to the categories. And then this bottom arrow is showing that the battle stitch for semi sane is connected to the other circle where it says team because I didn't know what team I was on yet. Um, my team name is now called Battle Stitch Galactica. <laughs> it's very fun. Um, and then I just grabbed one of those page flags, those corner flags that... Um, it says urgent and I didn't have a use for it in my monthly so I just threw it down in that corner. Last but not least I'm taking the final washi strip that is always included and I'm just running it along the top of this last page in this planner. Um, the last page is always a notes page in the in for this simply layout and I love that so I just take I took that last washi strip and I run it across there because I like the thought of bookending my months, right? With It starts the month with a theme and I end the month with that same theme. But that's all I've got. I will see you all next time. Thanks.